Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for September 17, 2014. For a few weeks now, actually a couple of months now, I've been teaching a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where we are learning how to succeed in life, but to do it by God's grace, his unearned and unmerited favor. For the last few days, we've been studying the life of Joseph, and we want to continue to flow in that same vein today. The title of today's message is God is still on the throne. No matter what you're facing, no matter what happened to you in life, just remember that God is still God, and he is still on the throne. We left off yesterday with Joseph walking up to his brothers and uh, they were plotting to kill him and he didn't know uh, that they were plotting to kill him. He didn't know that they hated him that much. He was walking up to them, had found them in Dothan and he comes up to them in, in a somewhat naive way and there they were uh, you know, with this, with this dubious plan. And later on, uh, they sold him as a slave. And this is the, the scripture I want to read for you. Genesis 37 and 36, the Bible says, uh, because they sold him as a slave, the Midianite traders later sold Joseph in Egypt. They sold him to Potiphar, an officer of the king of Egypt, the captain of his palace guard. So let me tell you what happened. So as he's walking up to his brothers in Dothan, and they were thinking, do we kill him? Do we kill him? Do we kill him? Reuben, one of the brothers said, no, man, let's not kill him. Uh, at least not right now. Let's throw him into this into this dry well. In other words, let's throw him into this pit. And so they attacked their brother. They grabbed him. They ripped off that coat of many colors, that coat that they they hated, he loved. And, and so they ripped off the coat of many colors. They threw him into a pit. And then they sat there and ate and took some time to figure out what they're going to do with their brother. As they were sitting there, they were still really wanted to kill him while he was in the pit. And then uh, while they're contemplating this thing, they looked off and they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead and they were heading towards Egypt. And, and one of their brothers at that point said, you know what? This was Judah. He said, what will we gain if we kill our brother and then hide his body? Uh, hide his body. Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not harm him at all. After all, he is our brother. So they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. At this point, it's worth noting uh, that there are many similarities between the life of Joseph and the life of Jesus. And here's one. Uh, Jesus, Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Then they, after they sold their brother off as a slave, they take this coat that they hated, the coat with many colors. They killed the goat and they took the, the blood of the goat and they dipped the coat into the blood of the goat. And, and I like to just mention, this is not part of the series. I'm just going to throw this in there, that this coat had many colors, but they dipped the coat of many colors into the blood. And when they brought back the coat to their father, their father could not see the, the colors for the blood. In other words, I like to say that the colors were, were swallowed up by the unifying color or the unifying power of the blood. And that's how it is with you and I. In the universal uh, body of Christ, this diverse body of Christ, we may have all many colors on the outside, but we're all covered by the same blood of Jesus. And it's the blood of Jesus that should unify us. So let me just throw that in as a commercial announcement to say that racism in the church is very ugly. Let's not be racist. We have too much in common to be uncommon with one another. So they take their coat back to their father and their father looked at the coat and he vowed to mourn Joseph's death until he died. So you would think that Joseph's dream, his dream was over, right? I mean, they sold him off as a slave. He gets there. The Ishmaelites take him all the way to Egypt. And then they sell him off as a slave. They auction him off. And it just so happens, just so happens that he could have went anywhere. It just so happens that he wound up in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar was in charge of the prison guard for, for Pharaoh or the king. In other words, in, t in modern terms, it would be like, uh, he went to the house of the head of the Secret Service who was working directly for the president. And so that's where he, he wound up. And you would think that it, it happened by chance, uh, but it actually didn't happen by chance because the hand of God was still working. This road, he didn't even know it, but he was on a road, a path to his destiny. This road would take him from the pit to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to prison and later from prison to prime minister. And so, so he didn't know it, but God was still working and God still had a plan. God was still on the throne. What does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you uh, on this Wednesday morning. Number one, God can turn it around. Joseph did not come up with the dream. He did not finagle his way into Egypt, nor did he ask to be placed at the home of the man in charge of the secret service for Pharaoh. But it happened to him uh, but it didn't happen to the point where he had been outside. He wasn't derailed from his destiny. It was all done by the enemy. But watch this. The hand of God was still at work. God did not make 
Joseph's brothers turn on him. Listen to me. God didn't make something bad happen to him. God didn't make Joseph's brothers turn on him. No, they turned on him, but God knew they would turn on him and he already had a plan to take what they meant for evil and to turn it around for Joseph's good. Number two, there's no such thing as luck. Some would say, well, as luck would have it, Joseph wound up in Potiphar's house as a slave. No, that wasn't luck. That was the hand of God. That was the providence of God. That was the grace of God at work in Joseph's life. Number three, it's never too bad for God. All Joseph did was tell his brothers about his dream. The dream came from God. The naivete came from Joseph and the attack came from his brothers. You would think that once Joseph wound up as a slave, that he was too far gone for the dream to come to pass. But never think. That it's over if God is involved. It's not over unless God says it's over. Your situation is never too awful. Your opposition is never too strong. Your outlook is never too bleak for God to move. One word from God can turn any seemingly hopeless situation around. So no matter what you're facing this morning, my message to you is believe God. If God can promote Joseph from prisoner to prime minister in a second, in a moment, then surely he can promote you out of your situation. Number four and finally. God is still God. When Joseph believed his God-given dream, his life seemingly went haywire. He woke up one morning in Egypt without his family and without his freedom. But God was still God. His brothers had turned on him because of his dream. But God was still God. God was still sitting on the circle of the earth. God still had all things under control, under his feet. God still had all power. And God turned it around for Joseph. Guess what? God can turn it around for you. Why? Because God is still God. God still moves. He still blesses. He still performs miracles. There's nothing God cannot do. So if you are facing a major challenge this morning, you can find peace in knowing that what seems major to you is actually minor to God. Get God involved in your situation through prayer, in faith, and expect that he will manifest his power by his grace. Let's close this out with a confession of faith, man. I feel this, this mess. I needed this message this morning. God is still on the throne and God is still God. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and my purpose. You made plans for me before the world began. And I am convinced that you will see to it that your plans for my life come to pass. Things may not turn out the way I want it. Things may not always turn out the way I expected. The people I thought would be there for me might even turn on me. Some of the plans I have might fall through. But no matter what happens to me, or no matter what happens with me, one thing I know, Father, is that you are still God. You still sit on the throne. You still have all things under your feet. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no situation you cannot turn around. When people devise dubious plans against me to bring me harm, to take me down, I know you can take those very same plans and turn them around for my good. So I am not afraid. What can man do to me? God is on me, in me, with me, and for me. I have no fear. Fear has no power over me. My trust and confidence is in you, Father, and in your dedication to the plans you made for me before the world began by your grace. So I enter this day with an overwhelming peace. And with overflowing excitement, because my God is still God, and he always will be. I declare this by faith, in Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word, apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org and sign up so that they can be a blessing to you. God is still God. You walk in the blessing. God bless you.